Hey everyone, my name's Tim, and this is my first tutorial. I posted this painting that you see on the screen here on social media, and I've had a few people asking me about teaching them or, or showing them how I, I did this uh, painting itself, and I thought I would record my thoughts on this, so bear with me. Um, my visuals look a lot better than the audio, no doubts. Um, so um, let's get started. Um, um, right now, I'm currently using Clip Studio Paint Pro. Um, I have an old gaming laptop that I, I use, and it will come into Intuos Pro. Um, you can do this on any program. Krita is a great free program. You can work on Photoshop. You can work in Procreate on iPad. I look forward to getting my own iPad with Procreate here soon. Um, but for this tutorial, I'll be using Clip Studio Paint Pro. And as far, as far as brushes, I'll be using a few that are free from Eric J. Anthony. Um, his studio, Eric J. Anthony's Clip Studio Paint Brushes free set. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, but mainly what I'm using is Hotline and um, some Air Gordon here as well. Um, Hotline's this nice, here, let me pull this up here. It's a nice creamy brush, as he likes to say. Um, as you can see, it's got some nice soft ends, but it's also got a nice blocking opaqueness in the middle. Um, and then I also use Hair Gordon. This was more for touching up and, you know, airbrushes are nice, but I use them to touch up mistakes. I don't really use them exclusively. And then later on, um, as we're getting into more of the detail, I do start using a bristle detail brush. These are for finer details as you can see, but those are pretty much the three brushes I used on this. Um, as far as the blending and the um, depth of field, I did use the blend brush here, and there are two modes, blend and blur. Um, I use blend a lot, especially when I was creating the locks of hair and, and making sure that they looked, you know, nice and smooth. And then when I was creating depth of field for these flyaways or for the shoulder, I was using a blur. I tend to work on large canvases. This one, for instance, is 10,800 by 9,000. It's good for printing posters and having a larger scale size. So we begin by sketching in a rough sketch of the hair. If this was a face or any other anatomy, it might be a little bit of a tighter drawing, but with hair, we have, you know, we can we have room for error. Uh, so we'll sketch it in with like a nice uh, mid-tone, natural tone that's gonna be part of like the color scheme. And um, then we're gonna switch the background to something that's not white. I use this kind of off-white. Next, start blocking in colors. And if you observe the subject over to the right, it's not just dirty blonde. There, there are multiple different ranges of colors in there. I, I definitely saw some reddish auburn color in there, some gold, some cool grays. Um, and I kept the color palette pretty simple, but you'll see it starts bringing out more and more depth as we work on it. Now my mistake right here was I started putting in too much detail too soon. That's fine. I was still kind of trying to get a hold of what I was doing here. Uh, once you started seeing though, I blocked in the braids here and then I started blending and it really makes the, the form pop. Um, it gives it like this nice smooth features to it. So I go back in, I start adding more details, more depth, more darkness. Um, observe the subject where the, the the shadows and the highlights meet. Observe where the shadows curve over the form of the hair. I, I almost think of this like as sculpting more than painting than anything. Now I'm starting to add more mid-tones. I've been using some gold to portray the, the blondishness of the hair. Um, and then I'm going to kind of fill in the neck and shoulder details because I want this to be a full finished painting. Um, probably putting way too much detail into this neck, but uh, that's a that's a video for another day right there. Um, so we're gonna continue and finish up this neck area and get back to the hair. I start adding some shadows to the neck and then you can see I start adding flyaways and a lot of random loose hair that's a part of the subject on the right. Now the flyaways on the right, I use the uh, blur tool to force a depth of field on them to make them look like they've receded. Um, tightening up the shadow a little bit more, adding more hairs that are falling down from her neck and from her, the side. Um, I use a range of colors on these. I don't just use brown or, or blonde. Um, I'm, I'm pulling, I'm sampling colors right from the hair itself. So everything is kind of meshing well. There's a nice theme. And as you can see, I'm starting to add some more highlights here. 
Um, and then I believe I'm adding more flyaways as I see them. You don't want to overdo the flyaways too much. You, you can see I just removed a few of them because they can get a little bit overbearing. Um, and now it's just polishing and touching up. And finally adding a background to finish the piece up. This work took me about seven hours to complete. What I found from it was that it is a piece where you're just gonna have to kind of keep working things, um, adding layers, working from dark to light, blending, then adding more detail, blending, then adding more detail. I really studied the subject. Um, this didn't come about over a few months. Uh, I have been painting for a long time, but it, it pretty much boils down to practicing every day, observing your subject and, and repeating it multiple times. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be making more. Uh, leave your comments or questions down at the bottom. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at JQS Paintings. I'll leave links down at the bottom. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you so much. Have a good one, y'all.